Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Grayscale Gorilla live show. Today, I'm really excited. Uh, today, as always, we have our, uh, our uh, what, do you, what do you call him, a, a co-host. Let's call you a co-host, Chad. Chad Ashley, everybody. How you been, bud? Good. How are you, man? Good. Feeling good. We're going to talk about your new background here in just a second, but I wanted to introduce our, our first guest here on the live shows. It is Nick Denbauer, also known as Smearballs. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, How you been? Thanks for having me. Honored to be the first guest on the show. Dude, I'm so excited to have you. Um, uh, Chad, uh, you guys were just talking. We first met in um, at Half Res, right? A few years ago? Yeah, I think uh, Nick was a speaker. Was it? It must have been two years now, right? Nick, I got It's going to be weird for me. There's two Nicks. I'm going to have to call. I'm just, I might just end up calling you Smearballs. Sure. But yeah, so Nick did uh, spoke at Half Res, and we I think we we saw each other in the lobby or something, and we we shared a meal and and kind of hit it off and became friends. Yeah, that was a good show. It's like uh, out of all the speaking shows I've ever done, it was the best kind of crowd because everyone's kind of hammered by the time I, <laughs> I got on stage. So definitely yep. have some good memories of Half Res. Well, yeah, thank you for joining in this year. Yeah, man. Uh, we're so excited to have you. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on the live show. We see you out there. We're going to pull up the chat here in just a second. Uh, let us know where you're from. Actually, let's. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts, just seeing where everybody's coming in from here. I'm going to throw up the chat. Let us know where you're uh, watching in from today. And um, get ready. This is going to be a crazy episode. We're going to, of course, answer your questions. We'll be talking uh, about Signal. In fact, we'll just released the latest version of Signal, Signal 3.0. And uh, Nick here was uh, helpful in helping create a new part of Signal that we uh, that we call the Looper uh, uh, tab. So Nick's going to be showing you that. We're going to jump into Cinema 4D. He's going to show you how he uses Signal and it's some of his crazy animations. If you have not seen Smearball's uh, animation, do yourself a favor and just go, you know, pull up a Chrome browser and... Uh, Go check it out. Nick, where's the best place for people to go to get a little taste of uh, Nick's uh, animation, let's call it uh, style? <laughs> uh, Smearballs.com. It's got links to all my social media channels. Instagram probably has the most recent uh, work. So check it out there. That was awesome. Uh, and then stick around later. Uh, we're going to have Nick uh, show us a project where he used Signal uh, in a really fun way as well. He's going to dig in and show you a few signal tips as well. So if you're a plus member and you have signal, you have the latest version, um, you know, Nick's going to show you some tips and, and we're going to learn something too, see how he uses it. So, uh, all right, let's see here. <laughs> how is it? Nick looks so normal. I'm guessing that's for you, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't model my characters after my own face. Unfortunately, you mean that, that, uh, uh, character <laughs> animation, you, you, uh, posted something recently. It was like, a a, a, a motion capture suit. Yeah, I you got playing around with that kind of stuff. Hanging over there, yeah, I got one of those Rococo suits. It's amazing. I'm pretty excited about that because I really felt like I was exhausting the you know Mixamo libraries, and I've got some iClone libraries as well. And I'm just kind of like, eh, you know. So are you like putting that suit on by yourself in your house, like answering the door in the suit, <laughs> and like neighbors looks looking at you? Honestly, like I've I've gained a bit of weight over the summer drinking beer, so I've got this beer gut, and it's like. <laughs> Thing. I bought, I got a large, but it's still kind of it's a hard squeeze. You know? so I don't want to post any pictures of myself wearing this thing right now until I lose some weight. But that's, <laughs> but, it, but oh it works amazingly. I just you know yes, it is very silly to be standing here dancing around like a lunatic wearing that thing. It's all spandex, but uh, <laughs> but the oh results are incredible. Like it's super smooth animation. The software comes with all these filters that like clean up, you know, drift and 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 errors with the you know suit which are very few but like it's pretty incredible software and pretty amazing hardware i'm pretty happy with it but i've only just begun kind of using it so are you gonna That's use great. it as a halloween costume you know like you, you don't have to <laughs> I'm do it just anything. going out in halloween in the metaverse so uh i can be whatever i want right. you know? there you go you can yeah you could go to door to door in that suit and tell people that online you're you know, <laughs> i'm in the giraffe. middle yeah <laughs> Yeah. No need for real candy. Someone's giving it. To me. <laughs> I'm just doing this for the tactile input right now. 
Not so that a 42 year old from. man should go asking anyone for candy, but you know. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> There's only one way to get the legit motion capture, and that's to go do it. You know, you gotta yeah. you gotta wear it and get the if you just wear it all day, you'll get all the all the um data you need, you know. <laughs> so from now on, are we gonna see every action on your animations is gonna be you, you think? Maybe. I mean, I Maybe. I'm not that talented of a dancer to be honest you know and uh, i can't do too much uh, in the acrobatic realm so maybe i'll want to get some specialists in to do some moves here and there but if it's just uh you know run of the mill picking your nose that's that's my territory for oh, sure dude. if you need help as long as i'm in range of the wi-fi i could go outside and you know go downstairs and like oh. do all kinds of cool stuff like that so i'm excited wow. to test the range a bit go pick up the mail and like get the mail <laughs> The male action. Totally. Well, uh, you know, uh, first of all, I wanted to say hi to everybody that that uh, said where they're from. We, oh, as always, we got an incredible uh, group of people from all over the place, Mexico, France, Norway. Uh, and as always, Rachel's in the chat uh, uh, hooking us up with links. Uh, she already linked up Nick's uh, website there, so definitely go check that out. Oh, and special hi, guest, Rachel's actually in the studio. Hi, Rachel. Everybody say hi, Rachel. That's... Uh, Rachel, who is always on top of uh, hooking everybody up with links and and watching our uh, show and making sure you guys get everything you need, so uh, she'll she'll see all of your um, all of your highs. So that'd be awesome. I also wanted to say, uh, get your questions ready. If you have questions for uh, for Nick and his work, uh, of course, anything Grayscale Gorilla, we're always here to answer your questions. And uh, Nick, maybe we can start. Uh, I had a question, which was, how did Give me the give me the rundown of how you got into all of this stuff and how you how you ended up doing the the type of animation that you do. I think it's so unique and it's <laughs> so uh, it's so uh, uh, unique to you that I want to hear the story as as you would tell it from you know getting into all this stuff and and becoming smear balls. Yeah, well, I guess I never really set out to you know, do this. I didn't go to school for this. I dropped out of art school in like 99 and just started doing construction. And I did that for like 10 years, but always in my spare time, I just kind of messed around doing a lot of video remix stuff, like taking infomercials and messing around with them. And then YouTube came around and I was started doing really crude motion tracking and slapping different party hats on people's heads and stuff like that. And uh, just kind of like, you know, naturally happened. I was like renovating houses and tearing buildings down and whatnot. And then on the weekend or whenever I had free time, I'd be just throwing stuff up on YouTube. And eventually I started getting jobs. I remember the first like big commercial job I got was from Ken Block, who's like a crazy race car driver. He was one of the founders of DC Shoes and did the, those Jim Connor videos where he's like driving sideways through buildings. And so he asked me to remix uh, his... Uh, Jim Connor 2 video and so you know added all these pterodactyls and all kinds of things attacking his car and it became like an official DC shoes spot on their YouTube channel so that kind of like started this career into doing weird advertising and stuff like that and later on that led to me getting a job because I did a lot of you know video manipulation and some political st satire stuff and uh, it landed me a job on Conan O'Brien where I became a bit creator for a bunch of years and just that's, that's kind of awesome. where I really kind of learned. That's when I started into Cinema 4D and I was checking out you, your videos and learning uh, cinema through YouTube, Grayscale Gorilla tutorials. <laughs> and uh, so it's cool we come full circle here. But uh, but yeah, so in, I think in Conan was where I really started implementing more 3D stuff here and there, doing some tracking and 3D elements tracked onto video. And uh, yeah, and then from there, I just kind of spun out to more, you know, short films and commercial work and it's always been i've always just kind of put weird stuff on my youtube for fun and that just attracted the clients i i never really someone asked me recently like can you send me a, a more you know corporate friendly uh reel and i'm just like i don't have one I've you never, know who you are, are calling. You're like you got the wrong guy here I'm just I was like, you know what if i have to do that i probably don't want the job you know what i mean so it's kind of like i've just kind of stuck with that and it's worked out for me that's awesome dude yeah, yeah i was i was uh Wondering if anybody contacted you to ask you to like, you know, spin a logo around. So it sounds like you you built your own reel just to do <laughs> to be like, yeah, I, I do this stuff. That's yeah. great. That's amazing. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, we got some uh, uh, 
chat here. We got, uh, hey, Naked Chat, good to see you back. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a full circle story. I always love hearing, you know, artists that I, um, you know, see that do great work that that watch Gray Skull Gorilla stuff. I always get a kick out of that. So thank you, Nick, for sharing that, too. Oh, That's always on. fun. And that um, goes back to like 2008 or something or 2007, whenever. I mean, you, when did you guys start? So let's see. Our first Cinema 4D tutorial would have been around that time, 2008, yeah. 2009. And then uh, the company officially started in 2009. So uh, almost 12 years now. I've been with you guys since the, since the start. Aw, <laughs> Nick. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> But it's That's really nice. cool, actually, because I, I think about a year ago, or I don't even know when it was, Chad, I remember sending you that, like, wish list of what Signal could do, and mm -hmm. it's just cool that you guys listened and, and kind of incorporated this looper thing into the software. It's so cool. I mean, Otoy's kind of like that, too. I remember Jules asked me, like, what are what, how can we improve this, you know, and or what, what, what are your top wishes for the software? And he started yeah. implementing some of my suggestions. So it's so awesome to actually get turnaround on feedback on software, you know, when you get to kind of help build the tools it's pretty amazing yeah well i, mean, I maybe dude, when go ahead go ahead chad when i think when when you have uh, uh artists that really understand the tool and they are willing to put in the time like you did to help us shape this update it's just phenomenal like we we love that we encourage more people that really have strong ideas uh around our products to get in touch and tell us why you think it should do something and if there's a good case for it, we seriously sit down and look at it and like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. So it's very much like uh, an organic process. And yeah, I've, I've had a similar experience with other software companies too. So I always appreciate that as well. When I can give feedback and I see it implemented, I know they're listening and I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Chad, that's something you've said too in a lot of shows. It's like, and, and that's true. Like so the, the good software companies like this kind of feedback they like to hear what how how artists really use their stuff and how it could be better so you know that was perfect like watching how you use signal nick and then hearing how it might be better how like it's, su it's such a helpful part of that process um and may maybe it's a good time to talk a little bit about that um maybe how signal uh was a part of your process and kind of some of the limitations that you bumped into that that helped uh kind of spark the the new uh looper tool yeah well i found like i i with through my character animation i put signal tags sometimes on every single joint in a character so it's all driven <laughs> by signal and it's like you know it's kind of crazy but i just hate keyframes i guess and it's just like <laughs> and i really i find it useful because you're you're messing with all the offsets and like a, an arm might be moving and you can just slowly change it instead of like opening up your keyframe editor and sliding and selecting and you know when you have thousands of keyframes things can get boggy and i don't know it's just like so much easier to work that way but i was finding sometimes i would put three or sometimes six signal tags on one joint because each one I would want different timings. And if mm. even if you have all three parameters, the X, Y, Z on, on one signal tag, sometimes I want to break that up and have uh, the X loop in one frequency and the Y loop in another frequency. So I'd have to do multiple tags. And what Looper solves is that it's all in one tag now where you can set the looping frequencies individually on each axis and the offsets on each axis, which was also missing. So having all the all those in one tag is a huge time saver and it just makes your project less confusing like i'm sitting there with like five signal tags i have to name them all to know which one is which and it's like it was a huge pain in the butt and i would open a project from three months ago and be like what is going on here like <laughs> to, like dissect you know because it's not like yeah. you can't really visually see the keyframes when they're all going there it's just you know buried in these tags so yeah it's super helpful and it just made everything cleaner that's awesome dude love it love it yeah, we love we love that. Um, and uh, if you're just joining us, uh, Nick's gonna open up a project where he used the new uh, looper tag, and um, show you how uh, kind of why why it's so powerful now. And uh, you know, at first you, when when you showed it, because you sent over a video, you're like, wouldn't it be great if Signal did this? And uh, at first I'm like, well, what's well, what's the use case for this? And you immediately had the, the exact thing. I'm like, oh, I see. <laughs> You, it's not just X, Y, and Z all in one tag. You want to separate it out, but without having three tags and the whole thing. So that was super helpful. And mm -hmm. Signal is all about looping and you know seamless loops. And you know maybe this is a question, or maybe this will be better answer once we're diving into Cinema 4D here in a minute. But 
you mentioned something about offsetting and kind of creating loops. What I've noticed about a lot of your work is you, you create a lot of seamless loops that don't have the typical looping to it. And in, in other words, you, it's kind of hard to find the loop point sometimes with mm -hmm. the amount of overlaps and overlays and everything you do. Do you have a, do you have a, a tip or, a, or, or something for the audience that kind of um, helps get to a more complex scene that mm -hmm. still has that, that looping uh, feel to it? Yeah, it's all about the, the noise, uh, what do you call it, modifier in signal. So like I'll have some kind of rigid loop going, something moving, and then adding that noise parameter where like so let's say everything loops at 16 frames and you've got 360 frames or something and it's uh you know looping very rigidly you can take the noise uh modifier and like stretch it out so it loops every 180 frames or something like that and uh and just add some like slight variation to everything so it's you know kind of it's not perfect in a seemingly random way so yeah you can get some right. kind of natural uh sort of a natural looking <laughs> movements out of something where you get that variation from the noise that's yeah, awesome. that's uh, that does remind me too, because um, I don't think we had signal out. I think we did a tease last live show, but it, I don't think it's we've really talked about it since it's been out. Um, for anybody that's a plus minor, that, that if you download Signal 3.0, um, it also we just added new noise types to the noise modifier. So oh, wow. it's I didn't even notice. A, that. Oh my gosh, <gasps> Nick! Call yourself a beta tester. What? What? I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you something here. So in the, in the looping noise modifier, which is just called the, uh, I think it's just called the noise modifier. Um, you can use it on anything. Oh, nice. Yeah. I see you, that. you, yeah, you used to, uh, we, we, you looping noise was always a part of signal, but you, you weren't able to, uh, pick what, uh, noise type it was. So you're kind of built in with the default noise, which was pretty flexible. Uh, and you could always, adjust the loop point. You could always adjust the, the contrast. We had a bias slider that we actually added contrast to that slider just to make it more clear. It essentially makes that noise uh, a little bit more black and white, so it affects it more. And right below it, now in Signal 3.0, is a um, uh, where, uh, uh, where you could pick your noise type. So all of the Cinema 4D noises are right there. You can choose them, and they're all loopable, and they're all ready to go. So there you go, Nick. Let us know what yeah. you what you find with that stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. So if you use like the the cell noise and you crank up the the bias to get like a really contrasty, you can get like flicker, like on off flicker oh, or stop motion flicker. Uh, that's cool. Look forward. Um, to it. Maybe I'll use it today, right now. Oh. oh. <laughs> awesome. We're gonna jump into Cinema 4D, guys. Uh, so get your Cinema 4D questions ready. Uh, Nick's going to jump in and show you how he uses Signal on um, uh, a, a project uh, directly. Show you the new looping modifier, and it sounds like you got to play with the new uh, noise stuff too. Yeah. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah. There's the whole that was like the 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 genesis of a building Signal was was getting this looping noise going on. Oh, yeah, Scott, what's just, up? Uh, oh, sorry. Somebody just commented on the uh, fields and Signal feature too. I'll go through that as well, which is huge, and I haven't even like scratch the surface yet just being able to control signal with noise is like super powerful so i'll do a little bit of that too yeah that's one of those that you know, the the uh the possibilities of using fields with signals uh with signal tags was just so incredible to see it and we don't even know what's going to happen like the power of fields can now drive any parameter using a signal tag and we're just excited for artists like you to kind of dive in and see what's even possible right there. Um, so, oh, and Rachel, thank you for uh, mentioning the other, uh, the, maybe the uh, next biggest feature of Signal is the new preset curves. So we have some ease curves on the, uh, the default mode. So um, these are curves I've used all the time, uh, just basic ease in and out curves all the way to bouncing uh, curves and elastic thing, uh, elastic animations. These are all built into Signal now, so you don't have to build your, your curve from scratch. Um, we do have a question here. Can I animate a character rig with Signal? Wow, motion, you're going to love this demo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's I got a, a little. That's a good segue, dude. That's, that's a good segue. Why don't we jump in in the next uh, cool. like five, five to six minutes here? Um, let's get a few questions ready. If anybody has any questions about Signal, 
Um, let's get them on the screen now because we're going to uh, move the chat to uh, make this full screen because you don't want to miss a, a pixel of this demo. Uh, but if you guys have any questions uh, now for, uh, for Nick or for us, um, we'll write them down here and then uh, maybe we'll explore them with Cinema 4D open so we can dive into it. So character, that's a no-brainer. I'm going to add the uh, noise types and uh, anything else. Um, let us know in the comments here. And uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, somebody, you're supposed to be somewhere and now you're stuck on a live stream. Sorry. Uh, question can about we BP get BPM here? I do use it sometimes, BPMs, because I do a lot of music videos and stuff like that. But I actually you end up most of the time figuring out what my you know BPM is for the song I'm using. And I, I'll use a frame rate calculator to figure out what my actual frame loops are, whether it's 16 frames or 18 frames. And then I just use the, mostly the regular modifiers just to have more you know room to mess around and use all the different ones rather than just the BPM one. So I sometimes use BPM. So I usually find out like if all my loops are 16 frames or 18 frames, I just go with that. The, the tough thing is, and I'm not sure if Signal if you guys have fixed this, but I noticed doing a 0.5 frame would round up back in the day. Has that been changed? Or can you do like a loop on a 14.5 frames in Signal now? Yeah, we, we actually, I brought that up, I think when we initially talked. And uh, Kent, our awesome developer, he had some, he had some reason or something he wanted, he, he, there was something about that. I don't remember what it is, but I'll find out and get back to you. Cool, cool. Because that is sometimes things I run into when I have a weird uh, BPM and I want to, you know, things get out of sync once you start. I think it was something it. about like he may have even said that cinema can't do subframe. I don't know if that's true. Uh -huh. I might, I might be getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll you find just out. Double your project frame rate, and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, that'll, let's. That'll be fun. Let's dive into that a little bit before we go uh, kind of full screen here, Nick, because I think a, a lot of people are. Um, interested in that um, type of looping, you know, mm -hmm. like animating to a song and really getting things on the beat. And so you mentioned, you know, frame rate calculator, you mentioned subframes and all that stuff. Can you kind of quickly run through how you think about animating to the beat there, just kind of break down your process? And yeah. um, just for those, of, for, for those uh, you know, members out there that are just getting into this type of looping. Well, I think when I first started using Cinema 4D, just having that disconnect from the music, because I was so used to doing musical remix stuff and, and After Effects and Cinema or and Premiere and whatnot, just like bouncing between music software and video software. And so that was a really strong link for me. So then going into Cinema 4D, I'd always kind of like feel like I was riding blind a little bit because, you know, audio is not the greatest integration in Cinema 4D other than some plugins and stuff. But I like to just, you know, once I have something rolling on my... Uh, uh, tempo like if I know I'm doing 16 frame loops or whatever I just start animating do what feels right and I'm constantly busting out preview renders and dumping it into my music software and sometimes I'm it's I'm so fluid with all my projects sometimes I'm still on like preview render mode in cinema and then bouncing into After Effects bouncing into Premiere and bouncing into Cubase where I do my music and I'm just kind of all over the place until the whole project comes together I do things kind of simultaneously and that's comes from my video remix background where it'd be like I make a beat and then I bounce it into Premiere and I do an edit and then I got a cool, you know, audio samples from the video going and then I bounce that into After Effects and do, start doing some animation. Then I have a new idea for an edit and then I, and now Cinema 4D has kind of been jumped into that situation mm. where it's, it's just kind of thrown in the blender and I'm just bouncing between everything at the same time. But really, you know, as long as my, my tempo is the same throughout my piece, I just figure out my loop points and I'm doing everything on, you know, 16, 32. 48 like loops just kind of like make sure everything lands on those hits and start messing with the edit and see what works i don't know i'm pretty experimental with it to tell you the truth <laughs> do, do you ever and, like collaborate with anybody or is it all just you doing all this stuff um like most of my personal work i do all the music and stuff like that but i have a, a few buddies that i do some stuff with and obviously like big collaborations like uh stuff i've done with dead mouse and flying lotus and stuff like that we've worked with some big artists uh in the music world but um, for my day to day, but you're editing like, your own stuff, though, right? Yeah, yeah. For like all my, you know, Instagram stuff and whatnot, I do all the music and sound design and the the video wow. start to finish. Yeah. 
Dang, dude. That's the fun part. Every I get hit up by a lot of people on Instagram being like, yo, I want to make music for your stuff. And I'm like, that's the fun part after I've done like tons of grueling <laughs> animation. And I do that part. Music. That's the fun part. But yeah. Are you uh, um, Ableton or Logic? What's your... Uh, what's I your... use Cubase actually. Oh, classic. Plus, yeah, I've goes, just been using it for so way long. Back. I tried Ableton and I'm just like, eh, eh. I'm used to my old, you know, Cubase. So I stuck with it. I love it. Yeah, it's not no cakewalk for you. Go <laughs> you way, know what? Go I all the way back, way back in the day with cakewalk. Like, so <laughs> I don't even remember what year that was, but yeah. This shit is so oh, over my head right now. Oh yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> well, Pro Tools was the reason I bought my first Mac. It was like the ability to use Pro Tools and record eight. You know, eight, basically a, a drum kit was what got me into all this stuff to begin with. So I love, I love all that stuff. I'm so glad to hear you do all your own music and sound, and yeah. that's just great. All right, we got a uh, we got some questions here. I did write these down. Scott uh, asked a question about um, some examples using Signal. So uh, Scott, we're gonna jump in right now, and uh, Nick's cool. got an awesome scene file to show you. We also have plenty of training, and if you go to the Signal uh, product page on our site, we have a little demo reel shows you um, stuff in action. Basically, any demo reel you see using Signal, uh, just know it's all being animated with uh, this plugin instead of uh, traditional keyframes. It gives you all this looping power and stuff we're about to show you. And then Kent had a question about the new signal trigger modes with fields. He says he's still a little confused on what those are. Uh, totally understand that. We might have some time today, uh, Kent, to uh, jump into that. Um, and the new trigger modes are all about using fields and how fields affect your animation. And uh, the different trigger modes affect your animation in different ways. I think we do have a YouTube video about that. Um, uh, that Andy made that goes over the differences between those. Um, but yeah. maybe we'll be able to jump in uh, today and do that too. So I wrote all those down. Thank you guys for the questions. I will be eyeballing the chat, uh, even though it's not on screen. So make sure you uh, bring up any other questions. Uh, but we're going to jump into uh, Cinema 4D here and jump into Nick's um, screen here. Cool. Share my screen. And get a little signal demo and see how he uses signal to create all these crazy characters. So... Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, let me move the chat. And let's pull up this crazy character. <laughs> yeah. Let, and uh, I'm just going to go full screen because I don't want anybody to miss any part <laughs> of this one. Here, first um, I'll show the actual video that this is from. So yeah, that'd be great. Uh, that's a great reference. idea. Um, so here, I'm just going to mute that so every single character in this pretty much is except for two maybe two or three mocap ones is driven by signal so if we here i'll just play it again i'll so, make the uh, air horn effects don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so like this guy licking the pole his arms his uh hips are going up and down his tongue before i did some like houdini magic on it all of it is just signal his head rotations the guy smashing his face with the phone there it's all signal pounding his phone into his face the uh humping person here with the bikini is all signal so yeah it's like completely completely driven with signal and uh i'll show you this guy here so here's uh him going this is eric andre by the way if you couldn't tell. So he's just moving. You can see there's kind of like a, you know, back and forth randomness going on with the hips. It's kind of subtle just to kind of like we were talking about before, adding that noise to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. give some mm -hmm. uh, animation to it. So I'll kind of like, I'm going to strip all the signal tags out of it. And you can see here, oh, my mouse is glitching out here. What's going on? Okay, there we go. Uh, so like, look at all the signal tags here. There's over a dozen, but this used to be like three times more before the new looper, um, abilities. So I'm just going to kill all these and start over. So this rig is, you know, it's all rigged. So I've got IK going on on the feet. So the hips are free to move around. And as are the hands, I've got a hand controller here. That's why he's able to shake the shake weight. So normally I would take a, uh, you know, put a signal tag on the hips to move it up and down side to side. So the cool thing now is also this new Grayscale Gorilla plugin called Drop Zone, which has made things a little <laughs> bit faster too. So if I wanted to take the coordinates and of uh, the position and hold shift and just drag it into the drop zone, it makes a signal tag for the position. 
of the hips. So that's kind of just a little quickie time saver and it's, uh, I'm still getting used to it cause I just started using it, but it's pretty handy. So let's just check out the new looper modifier. So, oh, it's gone down because it's uh, set to zero here. But so I'm just gonna zero this stuff out. Boom, and set my loop point to like 16 frames on each of them. So we can kind of see what it does. So if I go with like an eight centimeter variation on the Y axis, we'll start to see, oh, I guess it's doing the Z, but yeah, you can see it kind of going back and forth. I'm gonna change the spline preset to a sign and he's going forward and back now. And now let's put some on the X. Let's go inside to side. I don't like that. That's why I like signal is kind of fluid. You can mess around with the numbers and see what's going on. So now he's going up and down and front to back. So here's kind of the, the beauty of the looper is like, that's just going in a straight line, you know, like back and forth because they're both looped at the same looping point and the same time offset. So if we offset one by four frames now, you're going to get this, you know, oh. round and round. Or if I go minus two, he's kind of like lunging forward. So I'm just going to drop these numbers down a little bit. And we've got some, you know, cool motions going on. And, uh, now let's say we'll do the rotation. So I'm going to go back to the hips, grab the rotation, make another uh, signal tag in the drop zone. <laughs> I love saying that. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dude, we got to get a sound bite of that. Drop zone. So now we got the uh, rotation going here, which is all crazy. So let me zero these out again. Set these all to 16 again. Oops. And let's, you know, put a bit of rotation on the P axis. Oh, I'll do a sine wave here again. So now he's going back and forth again. That's pretty awkward in <laughs> human kind of stuff. And if I, yeah, there we go. Now he's kind of like lunging forward. He's really slamming that thing home. Yeah. Dude. So I'm going to just lessen that, go minus eight. And now the cool thing is, let's say we want him going side to side. So I'm just going to do an extreme number here. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Crazy. But I don't want him going that fast. And that's the beauty of the looper thing here now, too, is I can set this to like 32. So it's going half the speed of the other one. Now <laughs> it's going crazy. back and forth. Yeah. And now I can, and I can offset that by a few frames, too. And like, you know, give it a bit of a lag. Now he's... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a really thing. heavy yeah. shake weight. It's like yeah, he's that's struggling. just like <laughs> he's trying to get water out of his ears or something. So now we can add a bit of like uh, this rotation. I can match it to the other one at 32 frames and crank it up a bit, and then he's gonna do some. Whoa! On the side. <laughs> do minus 20. Let me see what this is doing. That's why you do. Oh yeah, there we go. He's just going side to side that way. That's cool. Yeah, so you can get some crazy, you know, funny. Looks like you should be playing now. a saxophone right there. Yeah. Like, that looks, that <laughs> yeah, looks like a sax solo. Swap that out with a sax for sure. That's cool. But yeah, so it's just like, you know, super powerful and super funny. And uh, I love it. So now the cool thing is if we wanted the uh, these two to be affected by a field now, if we went to fields and added a, you know, box field. Whoa, it's going crazy. Where is it? Okay, we got to get him in the zone. There we go. So he's in the zone. So you could animate something. Like this could be parented to another character that's walking by. So he's just laying there. <laughs> and then somebody walks by and they're attached to this field. And all of a sudden, whoa, he's getting up. Whoa, whoa. The closer you get to him, he just starts rocking out. So it's super cool. Just awesome. bringing characters to life with a field now, a signal. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, how hard the shake weight goes no matter what, but yeah. <laughs> how hard would all of that been if you were just manipulating keyframes in the F curve? I wouldn't even know where to start to get them to like start up like that. I guess I would have to bake everything and then like alter the keyframes in the timeline. I don't know how I would even start doing right. something like that. Right. Well, just yeah. even the animation part of it, not even like the field part of it, like just oh, yeah. auditioning and like playing. It's that playing oh, around. I'd be opening the keyframe editor 
and I would be drawing curves and moving them around and being angry at the spline curves and having to get into the nitty gritty of all that stuff. And it's a huge pain, but this is like just the offsets alone of being able to, you know, change things by a few frames gives you this cool, you know, subtle motion. That's just incredible. So I use it for everything. Like there's, I'll show you another video I did, um, of this pig. This is all driven by signal as well. Every single, part of this pig i mean there's some stuff wow. that's not, but, but yeah and i realized after i released this thing that i forgot to offset the back legs from the front leg so it's like they're walking in unison <laughs> <which is kind laughs> of funny. but uh either way whatever it's cool but yeah so this is all again a, a quadruped cinema 4d character rig i can show you that project uh quick i think i linked it here yeah that'd be great it's uh yeah so here's um, did you, did you, did you I didn't realize those were GPUs at the bottom there. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, those them. are all 3080s. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, just give that a second. I'll do another uh, do, 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 do project that I already have open when that one's... Whoa. There we go. I've got this other one. So here's a, a Mixamo control rig. Oh, the textures have to load on this one too here. Do, 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 do. all these 4k textures okay here we go so this is donald trump you're a former president i know it's old news and nobody wants to see this guy but i built the rig and it was handy in my content browser so <laughs> whatever so this is i like i like how you said our former president you, you, <laughs> you yeah, canadian you i'm a, I'm a north reporter here <laughs> uh, but so the the cool thing with the, the the Mixamo control rig, I won't get into kind of how to do that now, but there's some good tutorials. It's super kind of easy to set up, but it gives you this similar uh, rig setup where you've got, you know, hip controllers on top of the Mixamo animation. So you can like offset something like crazy and he'll still walk. He'll just walk all weird. <laughs> so this is like a super fun thing to play with with Signal as well. So again, I'm going to take the hip controller and take the position constraints and put it into the drop zone. <laughs> Boom. So now let's go again into um, uh, Looper. Uh, do, 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 do. Put a Looper on here and zero these guys out. Can I and teach this you a kinda, trick? What's that? Can I teach you yeah, a trick? Yeah, please. What what would speed me up here? Today? Undo those undo those three things you just did. Yeah. And right click the uh, the spinner. The spinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wait. Uh, no, the uh, the little dials up and down. A little. Oh those yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Oh no way! This is that's a face palm moment right there. <laughs> that's like uh, you know if you add up all the times I zeroed. Stuff I know I was watching you. I'm like, does he do this every back. time? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. I'll charge that. you for that. I'll charge you for that. Thank later. you for that. So I think actually, I think this one is a walk cycle that's like 38 frames or something. So I'm going to loop this at 14. And again, I'm going to throw a sine wave in here. And let's do a 12 centimeter variation. Let's see what that does. Now he's bouncing up and down. And you can go to like oh, extremes wow. and you've got him like. <laughs> oh, <whoops. laughs> That seems more accurate. Yeah, he's got some, you know, jive in his step here. So again, now we can like, you know, add some uh, rotation in here. So I'll go back to the hips and, oops. I'm not used to my resolution being up here. I'm on a 4K monitor. And I'll add a looper in here. And we'll do the same thing. 14, 14, 14, and do a little bounce back and forth. So <laughs> add the sine wave again. And maybe <laughs> I want to do this at 20, 28 or something. Or... I love the fact Boom. that you know, you, you like, do, you can tell you do this like all the time. <laughs> Because you're like, oh, I'm trying 16. Oh, no, it'll be a 28. I'm like, wow, how would you, are these arbitrary numbers? Like, I think what? I have this wrong, actually. This should be a 17 frame loop. It's just because I looked at the keyframes before and it's like 30 oh, okay. frames or something. But yeah, I'm going to change that, fix that for a second to 17. And 17, 17. 
and 34. Oh, 345. Cool. So, yeah, again, we've got him like going back and forth, doing a wonky walk. Gonna add a little offset in there, and he's like <laughs> grooving. <laughs> and uh, the cool thing with this one is um, adding fields to this now is like we can kind of make a party zone here. <laughs> You're he all about the party zone. You got the party zone. And when he walks into the party zone, he's going to walk normal. Well, he's going to catwalk normal. And then he starts, you know, freaking out as he walks through the zone. I can honestly say I never anticipated this as a use case. But <laughs> <laughs> What? No, I think everyone's going to use it for this exact sure. thing for sure. You're okay, right. I'm, I'm totally wrong. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, that's just another cool way you can have, you know, different characters walk into a scene where they all, you know, start running or they all just like <laughs> freak out or start twitching out or whatever, you know, so it's pretty amazing and powerful, the fields thing, but also the Mixmo character rig, being able to have that extra layer of signal on top of the uh, animation that's pretty huge. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I love this stuff. It's cool. Nick, this this uh, demo here might be a good uh, place to um, show a couple of the other field modes uh mm -hmm. that that at least the trigger modes that um um or the full-on modes i guess might be a better way to show this do you mind uh, going into your uh, two signal tags there and mm -hmm. jumping into the fields tab yeah and uh i think kent was asking the question about trigger modes and uh he's got this box field here ready to go and you could see actually um, let's just look at off real quick. Sorry, Nick. Can you just hit play and kind of we'll just describe oh, yeah. what off means? Off is just how you would expect a field to work, which is uh, on the edges of the field, there's a fall off that goes all the way to the center. You can see our little uh, uh, former president here uh, eases into this weird walk cycle. So he's kind of the normal walk cycle at the beginning. And then as he gets in deeper in the box, it gets more and more, and then it's full on in the middle part of the box where it's um, the the gradient's kind of all on, and then it, and then it fades away. If you go uh, to that trigger mode drop down there, Nick, on the signal tag, and set that to on intersect full. Cool. This is uh, here. yeah. This this is a good example of any time our little buddy is in the box here, he will be doing the weird dance, and then uh, as once it's triggered, it is uh, gon going to do that animation forever. Oh, wow, so, that's amazing. That's handy. So now it's, it says, okay, don't do what signal says until you touch the box. And you can see oh, it right there. Because it was looping, it kept going. Oh, wait, it's still... Yeah. yeah, that one actually, it looks like it's resetting it for, for some reason. So yeah. let's go ahead and flip that trigger mode to um, while, in while intersecting um and then full go full full okay yeah so what i'm trying to show is mostly that it starts <laughs> oh. immediately right there yeah and, and there's essentially no um there's no blending oh then he stops so he, oh wow so he's in a weird position that's funny yeah, yeah so that's the that's the you weren't looking at the beginning of that that loop that sine wave Ah, yeah, and exactly. Then he, then he plays, and it, that's the last frame. That's where he was when he exited the mm -hmm. the party zone. So now, <laughs> if if you do one more, Nick, and and switch that to while intersecting normal without the full, it's going to respect the gradient of that. Um, yeah, you, you that one right there. So this should respect the gradient, kind of ease into it. Roop, brunt. Yeah. We got to look at why that's blinking at the very beginning, but it should now fade away. Oh yeah, nice. In the yeah, proper I think it's way. Of the, I think it's it's that sine wave or some so, something up with that curve. Yeah, I think the sine wave, the fact that it's starting in the in the zero, yeah. not in the zero point, is doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you check out our training, we actually have a bunch of uh, like uh, animations that get triggered. So you could actually say, "Hey, this character does nothing until you pass a field through it." or it, it touches a field and all that other kind of stuff. That's so cool. um, that's what those do. And, and they're, they're, they're for different reasons, right? So uh, we had some blinking lights that Chad was working on. When you have something that you want to react very quickly, you want to use that just when intersecting full, just like that. There's like no transition. 
So that's a little example of that one. Um, yeah, sorry, cool. Nick. There, I just thought that might be a good way to show that that piece of it. Yeah, that's let me great. see. Let me see what other uh, questions we had to the noise types. Cool. I can kind of show um, you the pig rig a little bit too, and what's going on here. Oh, perfect. Whoa. But yeah, if you have any questions, go nuts. Yeah, if anybody has questions, we're looking at the chat here. Throw them up. We'd love to dive uh, into anything you guys want to learn about. So what do we got here? Sorry, I'm digging through this old project. Yeah, I think this was before Signal 3.0. So look, at I on the head, I have three different signal tags because they're all rotating at different intervals for the rotations because, you know, so now the new signal eliminates the need for three of these. So oh, yeah, everything, great. even the ears have signal tags. You see the ear flopping here? It's like each one <laughs> of those uh, controllers has some up and down or rotation. And uh, yeah, every little part, the, the belly twisting mm. back and forth, the hip controllers, the front hip controllers, the Bitcoin thing, every single thing has a, has a signal tag. I don't think there are any keyframes on the pig rig at all. Hmm. That's um, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it worked out. And you get some real natural stuff with all these offsets and just, you know, get even Sounds the jaw, like the, you can uh, see the jaw kind of moving left and right. Um, oh, dude, I noticed that right away. Yeah, like he's chewing. <laughs> so, yeah, you can Wait, get how many tags stuff. are in this right now, Nick? Let me see. One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, only 11 on that one. There's oh. probably more uh, buried in here on, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe that's it. 11 is pretty low, actually. I thought it would be more. Yeah. Um, but there's some other controllers, I think, for the feed and stuff. But yeah, maybe it's only 11. That's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah. So I was going to say, it sounds like we need a signal manager. Yeah. <laughs> well, some Next projects do list. get a little crazy. And uh, it would be kind of cool. Yeah, there was talk. I was talking with my buddy Joe, who's also a beta tester, who was saying it would be cool to have a signal manager, like similar to what... Um, uh, Otoy did with this light manager where you've got all your lights in one spot and all your emissives in one spot. It's really handy little uh, thing, which is one of my suggestions for Otoy as well. But it just consolidates all of your, you know, texture emissions from Octane. So it'd be kind of cool to have a signal manager where it just brings up all your signal tags, maybe tells you what they all are. And I mean, that would be pretty awesome to have them in one place instead of digging through your hierarchy. Yeah, that's awesome. Suggestion there. <laughs> Love it. Mm -hmm. We have a question here about making a perfect loop. And I think, you know, uh, it might be worth talking uh, relatively quickly about just looping in general, some mm -hmm. some pitfalls, some things to think about. Yeah, um, so one thing is dynamics for sure. That's what I struggle with. Like these wires are not looping perfectly. And I couldn't figure out how to do it when I've got like spline dynamics going on here. I think I had to fake it somehow. And I looked for, I went through and I looped it and I overlapped at every interval till I found, I, I think I ran the simulation for like five loops. And then I like looked for a loop within it by, you know, cropping to the 160 frame threshold until I found a loop that was good. But that's something I think, I imagine I could bake that out and use pose morphs to fix that. I've heard that you can do that with like, you know, hair and other soft body dynamics and stuff like that to force uh, your first or your last frame to conform to the geometry of your first. So that's a little mm -hmm. trick that can be handy. I don't have any examples of that handy, but I've done some of that kind of stuff. The uh, But may, mostly it's all about having those loops, like 160 frames. What are my intervals on this one? Um, 40 frames. So everything's on a 40, 80, and uh, 160 and 20 frame loops. So it's everything is divisible by that. So at 160 frames, it's all going to land on the exact same frame that it was started on. So that's kind of the basic math there of <laughs> keeping it all together. So but, wait, wait a minute there. So you basically pick what you want your duration to be, like your duration loop. Mm -hmm. And then you subdivide that timeline down into uh, intervals, I think you call them. So that you know, like, okay, uh, if I'm at 140 frame loop, I can do a 20 frame interval, and that this animation will happen on that interval. How how much are you planning these intervals? Or are you just kind of winging it and, and like paying kind of, attention? It kind of depends. If I've made the music first and I know I have that time to fill, I'll start with that. And other times, I'm just starting with animation. And let's say I'm at you know, 150 frames and I'm like, okay, this is a cool loop, but there's not enough variation. I want to extend it. Then I'll go to, I'll double it to 
300 or something like that, you know, like just to give yourself more time to loop things. Or if I'm like, oh, this is too rigid at a hundred and something frames. And it's like, yes, it loops, but it's boring. And I want it to do more or something like that. I'll extend it. Or, you know, it's just, you can, sometimes you get pigeonholed with like, oh, I, you know, you're just stuck with a more simple loop. You want to do something more interesting and you'll expand it. But mostly right. I like for little Instagram loops and stuff in the like, you know, 150 to three or 400 frame loop is usually my jam. And it's also like fun to make a little musical composition that long. So I kind of stick in that world where you don't have to think about song structure. You can just make a cool piece of music that's short and sweet and throw it out there in like, you know, a morning. <laughs> so it's still, it's all about kind of, I just like that little bite sized kind of, you know, duration. But then on something like a music video, it's like then I'm starting to think of how many shots I'm going to do, how many shots I got to fill. But also even then I'm pretty loose because I'll do a music video like um, uh, the Dead Mouse uh, Pomegranate music video, which was also heavily uh, uh, used with Signal here. I'll just pull it up. Yeah, I love I love this uh, this video. So this one was uh, I'll kind of skip ahead a little bit. Oh. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and like Signal is m mostly used in the kind of character animation stuff more than, uh, and blinking lights were all driven by Signal in the car, stuff like that. And the, you see these wings were driven by Signal and uh, feet on the car. That's all Signal tags on everything. So it's pretty, you know, uh, used throughout. But like stuff like this, uh, well, where is it? These dolphin people that's full all characters are done with uh all the character bones are done with signal as well this waving back and forth all that so yeah it's kind of uh you know then i'm thinking not about filling time it's about making kind of a cool loop adding variation per shot but again i'm i'm bouncing between the edit i don't really storyboard things out i just kind of plan all the events that have to happen and i'm still playing with the edit right to the end so i just kind of make all the cool loops everything's going at the same tempo and uh, it all just kind of fits in the edit based on everything being looped to exactly whatever it was in this one, 12 frames or 24. Mm. And uh, yeah, everything just works in the edit and you can kind of play around and yeah, it's Dude, that's a awesome. different thought process when you're doing a bigger project like this. Yeah. Here's signal again, bounce into the music. So when you're working that's on a, on a edit like this or a video like this with so much, all these different characters and stuff, like, do you have to like, get that approved by dead mouse before you like make those dolphin people or does, did he trust kind you to of, be like, yeah. I mean, he's a pretty good buddy of mine now. And this is the third music video I did for him. So at this point they kind of just uh, let me do my thing, but I did like the, I front loaded the characters. I made a spread of a, a cinema 4d uh, project of all the heads. And there's even more, I made like three times as many or twice as many that were in the video of all these different animals and fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. And uh, I just kind of, yeah, I, I share my progress as I'm making it. And I'm kind of pretty hands-on with clients like that. Like even in advertising, I just kind of find it works better if, you know, you don't want to just go in your corner and just make a project and give them the finished project. You'd want to involve them in the process. So I'm constantly bouncing my dailies off my clients, telling them what I'm doing. And, and sometimes they've got great ideas that add to it. And I kind of like to be fluid to the end because I think too many projects are no fun like this software is meant to be used and to be creative in the software and when all the creativity is done in projects where it's storyboarded and everything's rigid and done and they hire you to make a video and all the fun stuff all the ideas are done already it sucks it's no fun like i like to have fun in the software and like come up with ideas like oh oh look we made that trump guy flop funny that becomes an integral part of the video let's roll with that you know you want to be able to have ideas in the software and move with mm -hmm. it and it's way more powerful than you know having a team of writers think of something and and then trying to force that idea even if it's not working in the software Cause sometimes these ideas are cool on paper and you try and do it in cinema and you get like a five-day delay because it's a huge pain in the butt where you can just scrap it and come up with a new idea and do something that works in way less time <laughs> you yeah. know, so I like to be fluid and keep it loose so I can, you know, mess around and, and, uh, have fun in the software. Yeah. That's, that seems like how much of that came from how much of that, like improvisational, um, element came from you working with, uh, on Conan. Like, did, is that where you kind of like, oh, yeah, that was huge for sure. Because it was every day I would be kind of like 
on the hook to, you know, make some, make something, pitch something, make a video, watch a bunch of like, you know, weird news programs and <laughs> try and mess with the video. So you're kind of on the fly and writing in the timeline, editing, trying to cut up people's words so that it's funny in premiere. And then like, you can't write that stuff. It's trial and error. It's like, you know, weird data poetry on the timeline. You got to kind of like <laughs> mess with it and figure it out. So, Dude. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I, you don't see too many people using the software like that, you know, like because I come from production when we, we storyboarded stuff out, things had to be approved and there wasn't really a whole lot of experimentation happening on the day. And yeah, it, it's got to be pretty liberating, I imagine. Oh, totally. And that, that's not to say I don't do storyboarded projects and stuff too. I do that all the time in the advertising agency. Like you don't get approval on projects, you know, being like, Hey, we're hiring this guy with a weird name to like do something. You just got to roll with it. Okay. Procter and Gamble or whatever, you know, it's Tony the tiger is uh, not going to want to be uh, animated by you. I don't think, <laughs> but the, but the cool thing is like, I've, I've, you know, got some clients and agency people that do give me a long leash and I, you know, and they understand the process where I can say, okay, we're going to roll with this. This is the basic idea, but we need to leave room to, you know, scrap bad ideas or scrap ideas that are going to slow us down. And like, and people understand that fluidity. So it's, it's pretty awesome when that happens, but then other times, yeah, I sign up for a rigid project and it just, it works out too, you know? So it's, yeah. I, I do both. It's never just that way, you know? Yeah. That's incredible, man. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good time to maybe talk about your your latest project, which is your uh, your virtual gallery. Yeah, um, that's cool. I'm I, gonna can it, I I'll just share my screen? Yeah, I was just gonna I'm ask you. Maybe we'll there. jump back in and uh, you can give us a, a little a private tour here of yeah, uh, cool. of your new gallery. Um, awesome. Looks it looks so great. And Thanks. where can people yeah, find I, this? Uh, this is on. Uh, I'll show you the URL here. Where is it? A C Y B R like cyber without the vowels xr.com slash smearballs or just go to smearballs.com. It's on the front of my uh, website and uh, maybe we'll see some people in here now. So it's basically, it's like a video game. Oh, we got some peeps in here. So you can kind of see my house here. We've got Chris hanging out. This guy getting hit by the garage door. So I designed this and the guys at digital nation entertainment in uh, Los Angeles, uh, built this for me. I can't share my uh, webcam right now, uh, but uh, it's a total webcam enabled chat. So I've been having client calls in here and stuff where you, their avatars actually pop up a, <laughs> a video screen and you can talk and have a party. So I'll be hosting events in here as well uh, where, you know, I can launch new artwork and stuff because the inside's a gallery. Um, so yeah, so here's kind of uh, where the our artwork is little welcome screen here. And uh, so this is all kind of like my NFT artwork, Instagram artwork as of late. And they're all on the wall playing in a loop and I'll be able to do rotating shows and group shows with other artists. If uh, people want to jam on something and uh, yeah, all the artworks there and it's swappable. The main screen, I'll be able to commandeer uh, to do live streams. You know, like you guys could come in, we could do a grayscale gorilla party in here where we live stream and then the audience can all see the screen and it, uh, basically does 30 people until it spawns a new room. So we'll be able to like, you know, hang out at scale and do hundreds and hundreds of people. And then this kind of serves as my website too. So it's got all my links to my social media channels and uh, yeah. Oh, oops. we got some people in here. Let's see. I'll go back outside. We, ju we just shared the link. So we might have some. Oh, nice. uh... Yeah. See all the people are here. You oh, that's great. Your, uh, <laughs> you can turn on your webcams. Maybe we'll see somebody's uh, live feed here. Oh, I Somebody didn't know about the webcam. That. That's cool. Yeah, it's a video chat. So like like I said, I've been having, I think the day I launched, we had like, I had it full past 30 people and it was working pretty well. Like audio is uh, spatial. So you, you lose audio if you're far away from somebody. Otherwise it would be a, like, you know, nasty mess of audio. But uh, yeah, we got a bunch of peeps in here and we're working on getting avatars. Like eventually CyberXR will be a platform that everyone can kind of make their own space. They're hoping to kind of turn it into a metaverse expandable world thing. Right now they're doing a bunch of celebrity website projects and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's just a kind of a cool platform and a great way. Oh, there's Chad. There you are. What's up, man? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Hanging. 
That's so just cool. Eating, I was just eating some chicken. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's all uh, stereo audio too. So if you move to my left, you'll, you'll hear me in the left speaker and that kind of stuff. It's cool. Hey, wh- how did you get the beard? What's that? How did you, your avatar has a beard. Does oh, I can't see myself. I don't know. No, yeah. here's, uh, I can't see. Cause you got your, <laughs> your video screen. Up. <laughs> we need a mirror in this space. I want to see what my avatar looks like. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool though. We got some. That's awesome, man. House. This is one of the biggest parties I've ever had here. <laughs> but yeah, so in the future, I'm going to be doing like rotating art shows. That art swap button will swap to different uh, different artworks. And like I said, I want to have group shows here where we can kind of like showcase new work and link to people's NFT profiles. And I want to do some live streams, even like musical performances and stuff. And you know, maybe I'll get the mocap suit involved somehow if possible. <laughs> So, oh, there you go. Yeah, I want to yeah. see the the mo the mocap of you walking around in here. <laughs> I still have to renovate the bathroom. It's not accessible right now, but the door kind of shakes as if somebody's stuck in there. It'd be, it'd be cool to get the <laughs> pool table going too, but I don't know. Chad, I love you. Just hanging out in the corner there <laughs> by the pool table. Yeah, just hanging. He's that guy so, in guys, the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to see if I could get this chicken to do something, but. No, it's uh, the only interaction really right now is just hanging out and talking on the video calls. But yeah, it would be awesome if you could throw that chicken around or something. But yeah, I wanted to lay an egg and that egg to like roll into one of these billiard (laughs) holes. Yeah, actually, originally I had him laying the cue ball, but they forgot to put it in. I'll have to wait for 2.0 here. All right, uh, but I'm excited to get avatars going in here because it'll be cool if you could make your own or import a you know OBJ for a head or something. Oh, we got somebody else here. Who we got? Adam. What's up, Adam? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> cool. Hi, Adam. Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah, we got quite a few people in here. That's a good, good list. That's awesome. Oh, we got another one here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm like afraid to use my webcam instead of my stream in case my stream screws up. But Chad, are you on both oh, right now? I'm on both right now. I just tried it. It worked. So. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. That's so that's cool. Awesome. I'll try mine. Whoa. Yeah, where are you? Uh, oh, we cannot activate your webcam. Didn't work for me. Yeah, probably because you're sharing your screen or something. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. But yeah, that's my gallery. So look forward to some uh, events or something in here. I don't even know what yet, but something will happen here. <laughs> Maybe you guys should come in and do a show here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that's amazing. So so if there was an event in the space, mm-hmm. the way, I mean, I guess this seems obvious as I say it, other people can experience it by doing exactly what they're doing, logging in, getting yep. a character, walking around. And if there is somebody... Uh, to pay attention to or whatever. Like if there's a, like you said, a music thing or whatever, they can actually like hang out over by the, the thumbs up or whatever. And people could decide where they want to hang out and what, you know, if they want to go outside and react or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about like bringing in 3d characters into the space, but to live stream on that main screen where the dog is chilling is the idea for yeah. now. Oh, I so, see. Yeah. That's like, they're the main, they're the center of uh, the, the show for the moment or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Highlight totally. them. And I'll have Very a back cool. end here too where I can kind of swap out textures so that space texture outside I can have video playing in there potentially and uh, the posters on the wall here I could swap out. So there'll be a bit of a back end that I can easily do it without having to, you know, re-upload the whole project here. So it's kind of cool a way to keep a website fresh and have it like a video game. <laughs> what a cool concept. This is great. All right, I'm going to I'm going to jump in here. And if you're watching uh later on uh YouTube, uh come on in. Join <laughs> join the party. And uh is there any way to like sign in or anything when you when oh, yeah, you get just, in there? Uh, just say just say your name here. I'll jump back in here. Whoa. Nice feel like uh like a Nick was here. Oh. Um, They're asking uh, what the TV with legs is uh i don't know it is it is what it is it's my welcome screen <laughs> it's your home screen yeah oh am i sharing my screen still or no oh sorry let me click it oh, yeah. there you go that's the tv we're talking about it's just a welcome screen from an old reel from 2015 <laughs> i'm reusing some old content on here that's but, amazing yeah 
Cool, dude. This is great. Oh. Hey. <laughs> He's French. <laughs> but you can see He's the still French now. Yeah, no. hey, you know what? I learned it up until like uh, grade eight or something, or eighth grade, as you Americans say. But I forget everything. <laughs> I went to France. I went to France not too long ago, and I was just like barely hanging on with my French. It was not uh, not great. <laughs> Are you in That's here now? Yet? Oh. Oh no, I haven't. I've enjoyed. I've been. I've been just watching you. Oh, I see. I thought you were jumping in here. Yeah, oh, I yeah. I got some more artwork. I got my shopping cart lady here. I think oh, I used some signal on her out. too. That was the same kind of rig. We've got signal moving her hips up and down and uh, on top of the walk cycle. So I added some animation there with signal. Uh, this one doesn't have any signal, but he's uh, <laughs> painting the wall with his butt. This tongue is probably driven with signal. Pretty simple. But That's yeah, so so I pretty much use it in almost every project. Like, it's, uh, This is know. awesome. <laughs> yeah if you're watching later come and join in oh, yeah the dolphin join yeah. on in you don't know what's going to happen here there's some, <laughs> there's some keyframe errors on the right leg that have to get worked out but <laughs> that's another thing i want to have like a rotating art show in the uh in the cage, cage. <laughs> now how what was the process of getting some of these custom animations and things it to the team to put in this space yeah, here so, is it so this space was I, I just built it in cinema 4d with uh originally with octane materials but then i realized that uh, to port it over we were trying to use like uh uh octane materials ported into uh unreal but it was i, I guess their process was easier just to take U cinema 4d standard materials and move them over so i gave them fbx's of the character of the characters, I guess, the leg guy too. And they just brought them in and retextured everything. And I was actually pretty impressed with kind of how good it looks in here, especially on the outside. It's like the lighting and everything looks a lot better than the, you know, in browser things I've seen online, like Decentraland and stuff like that. I just feel like this has got a bit more kind of atmosphere and textures going on. It's not too far from my Octane um, render that I did, you know, to start it out uh, to do mm. a little demo. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, I gave them Cinema 4D files. This whole scene was something like a quarter million polygons. And I think they halved it. So they did a lot of like, you know, decimation and got it to work. Like you can see here, my face is kind of pared down because it has to play in real time, obviously, on a server with tons of people and characters. Moving so this is, this, is, <laughs> this is also pixel streamed. Like this isn't processing on your computer. It's like streaming. So your character is going on a server somewhere and processing it and then streaming it back as a video. So it's kind of an interesting. Oh, interesting. Thing. You're seeing, you're seeing like a video feed at this. Yeah. So you should be able to play this on a pretty regular computer, you know, like with a lot of characters and a lot of video feeds. I mean, it's a heavy stream, like your internet connection might bog out, but it's not a processing heavy app here. So it's just kind of cool. So oh, I'm, we're waiting for kind of like, fix it so it works on mobile it will open in mobile but it's not really optimized but uh that's why i don't like I, I want this just to be my splash page when you just come right into my website i have it in an iframe right now but like until it works on mobile i don't want to like, just have you jump right in here you know <laughs> so it's kind of uh, <laughs> that's amazing thank you so much for showing this um yeah, thanks for this... uh, featuring it i appreciate it oh absolutely this is great <laughs> Well, I figure uh, with the rest of the time we have here, we can do kind of a, how we end most shows. We do a little lightning round, the last little Q&A. Um, so if anybody has any questions for Nick, his work, uh, it obviously anything Grace Go Grill, anything we can answer, that's what we're here to do. Um, if you're new to the live stream, we do these uh, every other Thursday uh, at 3 o'clock Central. So put it in your calendar. Uh, we're going to be experimenting with... Uh, other guests and different formats this year for this season, I, I guess we should call it. So definitely put it in your calendar. And um, if you're on the Grace Co Gorilla newsletter too, we sent out an email uh, either the day of or the day before just to let you know what's going on and, and who's coming up. So don't forget to do that. Uh, also, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, you're watching a recording or watching it live, 
the uh, bell notification thing will let you know when we go live. So that's why, you know, if you do the notification thing, it'll yell at you when we're live. And then that way you'll, uh, you know, if you're here late, you didn't want to be late, hit the notification, you'll get uh, notified. That's what that does. Uh, let me pull up the chat. And um, here we go. Thank you guys for the great questions. Uh, if anybody has any last minute questions, they did uh, mention what renderer you were using. I think it got answered in the chat, but uh, yeah, I'm an they, octane only kind of guy. I know Chad has some back and forth on the render engines on Twitter, <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it. Octane does everything I needed to do. I don't even desire using another one to tell you the truth. And I'm like fully invested in Octane, so You're I have a creature of habit. Well, it's also, I have five machines with nodes on each here. I've got a giant render farm. And I mean, like to set that up with tons of renderers and do, you know, pay for whatever you need to get a scale running on all kinds of renderers. I mean, I've used Arnold for a project once. It was cool. But I mean, I don't know. I just love Octane. I love all the extra stuff it comes with too. And the, you know, crazy Vectron stuff. And it comes with Ember Gen and World Creator. I don't know. I'm, I'm loving the Octane package these days. I feel like Vectron, you need to say that with the same like energy. It's a drop that you zone. Like, yeah, drop. <laughs> Vectron, Vectron. Drop zone. <laughs> you gotta use Vectron in the drop zone, bro. You guys gotta make drop zone t shirts that have like a crazy font <laughs> with a lightning bolt or something. Yo, like, time to take this to the drop zone. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like zone. something new at Six Flags, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a ride right there. <laughs> Get on board the drop zone. Uh, that's great. All right, get your questions in, and if you have a question too, it helps us find it in the chat. If you put a Q in front of it, and uh, we'll do a little lightning round. Any questions you guys have? We did have a question about a promotion or promo code. We don't have any promotions going on right now, but it is important to let people know because some people don't know the pricing and how we do it. Uh, the way uh, Plus works, you could join monthly and pay forty nine dollars uh, per month, but if you pay annually you actually save four months worth uh, if you pay upfront annually. So it drops it to $3.99. So um, if you want to uh, join and get a discount, there's always a discount if you join annually. You essentially get four months free if you pay upfront. And with uh, all of our stuff too, there's a full money back guarantee uh, within 30 days, I think it is. So you know, make sure everything works and, and uh, uh, you know, it's all compatible with everything you're running. Um, you know, so there's no risk to you guys if you want to give it a go and even just try out Signal. So get in there. Uh, we hope to see you in Plus. And uh, that's why I'll, also why we do these chats here to talk to you guys, talk to our Plus members and answer really any questions you guys have um, you know, from uh, the, the history of, of Nick's work and how, how he does his work all the way to any um, uh, Plus or Grayscale Gorilla questions, obviously, here for the last few minutes. Um, I did. I'm, I am seeing some questions come through here. I'm going to get to those in just a second. I did also want to let everybody know uh, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but um, we will be at Half Res, uh, which will be a smaller version of Half Res this year. If you're in Chicago, can't wait to see you guys. Uh, and um, a little announcement. We'll be talking about this more uh, as the week goes on, but I wanted to give you guys a little sneak uh, preview that we just released brand new training in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And it's modeling training from the Making It Look Great series, which is uh, everyone I've polled and everyone I've talked to that, uh, that when you ask them how the best way to learn uh, modeling is, they all point to this training. So we're really excited to include that for all Plus members. You can go watch uh, and start learning proper um, modeling. Chad, I know you've uh, checked out that training too. Do you have anything to add about that, that modeling training? I actually haven't watched it, <laughs> but, oh, but I've, well, we I've, heard, get you in. I've heard the same thing. I've heard it's amazing, uh, but I haven't had it. Haven't had time to check it out yet. But I'm stoked that it's in there, so now I can actually go watch it. Yeah. Well, uh, Joel, I missed your question. That would, that would have been a perfect. Uh, I know. Uh, I thought you there. saw the question. I was like, oh man, you must have saw that. <laughs> it, it is a sneak peek. Yeah. So. Um, uh, there we go. We got we got praising uh, this uh, this uh, making it look great. Eleven. It's all about hard surface modeling, and um, it is really really robust and it's really in depth. And they really uh, start from scratch. So if you've ever been intimidated by modeling, 
but you've always wanted to, to do it and understand how it works in Cinema 4D, this is the best training out there, and now it's included uh, in every Plus uh, membership. So if you have Plus, go check it out. Go bookmark it and um, learn how to model, will you? Come on. Um, all right. Uh, Scott, uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, we got a question. Uh, I'm going to assume any questions are for Nick, for, for not me. So I'm just going to put this one at you, Nick. Got a question here. It says, Nick, where does your inspiration come from? Your character work has a very special and recognizable look. But how did you get that look developed? Uh, I don't know. Just kind of happened naturally, I guess. I don't know. I, I think back in the day, like when I was a teenager, I started making uh, 2D uh, collages by buying multiples of the same magazine. So I would have two of the same ad and I could cut someone's face up and make their cheeks bigger by layering it and doing collage work. So I always made these like warped faces since I was a kid and just, uh, you know, did all these cut and paste weird distortion collages back in the day. So I think that just kind of kept going for the last 20 something years <laughs> into my current work of taking like, you know, I remember buying my first like super high res 3D scans and being like, wow, these are amazing, but they're too normal. I've got to like, you know, make their foreheads bigger and add a third eye or whatever. I don't know. I just kind of like want to make caricatures of people sort of. And it's just uh, kind of cool to take these realistic scans of people and turn them into freaks. <laughs> so is that still your process taking, you know, human scans and, you know, Lately, adjusting them and blowing them up and doing all that stuff? A mix of like scans. And I've been using Character Creator 3 quite a bit. The uh, That's why I made Eric Andre with. So there's a piece of software that comes with that suite that's called uh, headshot in within character creator three where it kind of just takes a front view of a person and makes a pretty decent you know model of them and then you can you know tweak it and kind of like bang it into shape and then you've got all these pose morphs built in in iclone mm. and, and character creator for all the facial expressions but you can take all of those pose morph sliders and crank them to like 300 like go beyond 100 percent and make them like wig out and make some crazy faces so it's kind of cool to play with that and or go negative with them and make their chin roll into their mouth or i don't know it's just kind of fun to go beyond the 100 percent parameter in that one <laughs> so yeah but it sounds been, like it, that's oh i'm sorry nick it sounds like that's a part of your process in general and why you know like you mentioned it earlier the idea that cinema 4d and signal and dynamics and you know all of this and and and, and playing with these characters I, it seems a lot of it is uh, is like trial and error and just experimenting until it looks awesome or great or funny or whatever. It, it seems like there's this really uh, improvisational nature to 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 it. Do you ever come across anything where you're like, it has to, you know, you have the vision and you're trying to mold it in in your vision, or is it or is it always this uh, like let's see what this does kind of kind of mentality too? Yeah, sometimes like uh, I mean that's why I lean on guys like you who make tutorials so I can figure out how to do specific things when I have an idea that I need to figure out. So I mean it's all I think both of those uh, approaches are part of the learning process. You know, sometimes you learn through experimenting and what does this slider do? What happens when I crank it past a hundred, you know, and then other times it's like, I need to do this specific thing for a client and I need to learn how, and I'm so glad that Chad and Nick put this on the internet. So it's kind of like different ways of learning in different circumstances with different deadlines and timelines and uh, needs. That's awesome. All right. We got a few more questions here. Uh, Rachel threw a link in to the new training. Um, thank you, Rachel, as always on fire with the links today. Um, we got Scott, uh, singing the praises again of uh, the new uh, modeling training as well. Um, and let's see if we could tackle this one and we'll grab a few more questions before we take off here. Maybe a bit off topic. Adam says, maybe a bit off topic, but how would you try to sort of tween between a spherical lens, making it look like an anamorphic with signal, specifically the horizontal anamorphic stretching? Have you guys messed with this? Um, this kind of like uh, different type of, of lensing or... Maybe, you know, uh, I, I've, I've, I've also experimented with like putting a lens in a sphere and actually trying to create a lens, you know, or putting a, a like a contact lens type of thing in front of it and bending it, <laughs> adding a, a clear material to it. You get a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. cool bending. It takes a while to render, but that also might work. Any you other? Can uh, some, you can do some pretty cool effects with uh, Signal and, you know, 
you know, if you're like uh, closing up on a person's face and you're pounding the uh, focal length with the signal tag, you mm -hmm. can get some crazy effects with that. And like, I don't know, I haven't tried much of that, but that's a cool idea just to like, you know. Yeah, see if you, you can drive like lens distortion or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be yeah, it's an important reminder that signal can be used on any animatable parameter. So uh, in one of my demos, I think that's on YouTube, I used it on the uh, uh, on the lens and actually did a little bit of zooming in and out and added a noise to do that. Um, so, you know, if there is some sort of anamorphic or any sort of stretching or distortion built in that you just want to animate between, obviously that's an easy one. You just drag it on drop zone and it'll make a... <laughs> uh, <laughs> It'll make a uh, signal tag for you, and you can just start animating it or using noise or however you want to do it. Um, uh, Joel's asking if you do uh, any NFTs. I think you were talking about that in your uh, space yeah, there, those, Nick. Uh, I've been doing that quite a bit. I was all like pumped because I had some success in NFTs earlier in the year, and I'm like, yeah, I don't have to do client work anymore. And now I'm doing like client NFTs. So it's like. <laughs> It's come full circle, and I'm just like, why Why didn't I just keep doing my own NFTs? No, I'm just kidding. I've been doing some cool stuff with cool clients, but yeah, NFT related. So yeah, both fronts. What's the best yeah. way to check that stuff out, Nick? Yeah, I'm on Super Rare. So you can oh, awesome. search for me on Super Rare or uh, go into my 3D website and click on the link on the Star Trek console. Oh, that's right. You got all the links. <laughs> All right, we got a real important one here. Uh, it always gets real serious as we go on. Uh, we have one that says, uh, do you believe in life after love? Nick, you go first. I don't know. I believe in share. I, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. I believe in auto-tune. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Uh, is, uh, is character creator similar to Daz 3D? I think it is similar to Daz, but there's like, you know, less aliens with boobs you know <laughs> right Daz, Daz has that market cornered uh but yeah i think it is i've used Daz a little a bit more friendly I got sort of frustrated with the insane file structure and you know things with Daz and character creators just kind of like i mostly use it because the iclone pipeline too like now using my motion capture suit it like doesn't really calibrate the hand it's really hard to calibrate the hands because you're just doing like an a pose to calibrate and then like when you move your hand somewhere, sometimes it's like not on your head, it's like over here. So an Iclon can really easily, it's kind of like the Mixamo control rig where you've got controllers on top of your keyframes where you can just move the hand and put it where it needs to be. So doing that pipeline from the motion capture suit into Iclone, fixing everything, and then making the characters in Character Creator, it's just all one big pipeline, and then bouncing it all into Cinema 4D to do the pose morphs and render, it's just a great flow. So that's why I use Iclone Character Creator. Awesome. Uh, I think with all the uh, Star Trek stuff happening, we got a really serious Star Trek question. Uh, any uh, any comments, opinions here? We've got TNG no or DS9? TNG for sure. DS9 was like, I watched it, but I'm like, TNG forever. Isn't that, isn't <laughs> what, that what is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that a file format? <laughs> <laughs> I don't pronounced, speak nerd. Sorry. Pronounced tune. He's a Star Wars guy. <laughs> uh all right here we got uh all right um perfect rachel thank you for the link there's uh nick's uh, super rare link check that one out uh oh rachel's uh tng as well good good <laughs> um all right uh oh we got a, a jeremy cox tutorial they're mentioning with a uh, camera and lenses so you might want to look that one up uh, I don't know if we'll be able to find that link exactly. If maybe somebody remembers where it was, I know Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy uh, does some great demos. He's done a ton of them for um, Maxon at NAB and Seagraph and stuff too. So maybe you want to search that. Uh, any Jeremy Cox uh, video is great. Go check him out, and his he's a great artist too. Um, all right, we've we've officially hit. Uh, everybody's talking about Star Trek now, so I think we've hit the end of <laughs> <laughs> the questions. Um, and as we get into our like hour and a half here, Nick, thank you so much, man, for uh, joining us and and sharing your process and uh, of, of course the the signal demo and everything is so great to see. Um, any anything else you're working on coming up here that uh, that you're allowed to talk about uh, or any, anywhere else people can uh, see and learn more about Nick other than your 
new uh, virtual gallery. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Just my website. And uh, no, I'm not working on anything I can really talk about right now. Unfortunately, it's all going to be a big surprise, but there's a really big one that's going to drop soon that I'm going to have a party in my website space that you're all invited to once it gets released. So uh, I'll be sure to put that on my social channel so you can check it out. And I think we should have some kind of a drop zone t-shirt design contest because I want one of those shirts. Like, it's got, <laughs> Oh, that's, it sounds like you design it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll just design it and split the profits with you. I want like 10%. <laughs> Wait, split. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> talking about, it's probably not right. even 10% profit margin on t-shirts anyway. So whatever, you know, I mean, We're Chad, your, <laughs> your drop zone logo is pretty, pretty sweet. I could see yeah, that. It's pretty, it's pretty good already. You, know, you got the target lightning bolts target. around it. Yeah. There should be yeah, a file dropping into like an earthquake or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is a, this is a, a tip too that I've we've talked about on the Slack channel. Actually, a reminder to go join the Slack channel. Um, uh, it's in your account. Just go click on um, go to your dashboard. You'll find a link to the Slack channel. We're always uh, helping each other out and answering questions about you know where stuff is and you know um, little technique ideas and a little bit of gear. Uh oh. It's getting late. Cracking Chad's ready. Big bottle. Um, uh, that's also, uh, where was I? I had a second one. Oh, a good reminder that drop zone works with more than just signal. It actually works with uh, uh, Gorilla Cam and also HDRI link. So uh, no matter what you drop in there, it's kind of smart and it knows what you're trying to do and it puts the right tag on there. So don't forget about that. I had a few questions about that. Um, Chad, anything else we're missing for... Uh, for today no i think you got it all thanks nick we appreciate you coming on and showing us all this cool stuff learning about your process i think that's just been a great time yeah thanks for having me that's uh that was a lot of fun and i'll continue to beta test until i finally see uh something that breaks signal which hasn't happened yet <laughs> oh that's good to hear <laughs> thank you nick we appreciate you man uh yeah, and well uh, Thank you, everybody, for joining us for another Grayscale Gorilla live show. And uh, we will see you in another live show really soon. Happy animating. Bye, everybody. Wave, Jake.